Greetings gamers and welcome to another LaserCorn channel video. Today we're talking about one of my all-time favorite topics, Defy Media. Now recently you may have seen Matt Pat, the game theorist himself, made a video about how Defy Media stole 1.7 million dollars from creators in their MCN. And you know, me and Matt Pat have a lot in common. We both got money stolen from us by Defy Media, we both have adorable children, we're both devastatingly handsome. Two of those things are true. Anyway, uh, I was one of those creators, my Facebook and YouTube channels were both in the Defy MCN. Now why was my channel in their network, you might ask? Well, it's because I'm an idiot. A long time ago, I didn't really have a channel, and they offered to make one for me and let me use all their equipment and then just cut me a rev share. And I'm like, that sounds great, I don't really have the equipment to make it myself, let's do that. Fast forward, they do a bunch of shady stuff, I negotiate to get my channel back, but they threw a clause in there that says basically, hey, you gotta stay in our network for X amount of time, and I was just about to get out and I was going to leave, uh, but before my contract could end, they went under and they kept a bunch of money, like three months worth. And I didn't lose MatPat levels of money, but it was a significant chunk of my income from 2018. It was definitely a large percentage, and I'm pretty pissed about it. Anyway, a lot of this was covered in the MatPat video, how they screwed over their MCN creators. And I've talked a little bit before about how they screwed over their employees by firing them without giving them proper notice. But did you know that Defy Media has actually been screwing over creators for years, even before they went out of business? So let's run down the top five ways Defy has screwed creators that you might not have known about. Let's start with game trailers. In 2014, Defy Media bought game trailers. I remember them moving in. I'm like, oh hey, the game trailers, guys. I've seen your stuff. And in 2016, of course, Defy gave them all the X. They said, hey, we're gonna keep your name and your trademark and your library, uh, but we're not gonna pay you guys anymore and you guys can't have that stuff. Go do something else. But the game trailers, guys, are more than just a name. They are damn good at what they do. They became easy allies, escaped the gaping hell maw that is Defy Media, and are now doing very well for themselves. Go ahead and check them out if you get a minute. I'll leave a link in the description, and we'll move on to the next one. Let's move on to Gamefront. I actually used to write for Gamefront. It's a games journalism website. They also hosted mod files and a bunch of other files too. They were called Filefront. Anyway, uh, Break buys them. Break merges with Alloy, who becomes, you guessed it, Defy Media. And what does Defy Media do? Well, in 2015, they lay everyone off because that's kind of their MO. They're kind of studying the EA school of business acquisitions. Let's keep it rolling. Let's go right on to number three. How about the escapist home of Jim? Sterling. Oh wait, nope, I'm sorry, not Jim Sterling. Jim got out of there way back in 2014. Now while Jim left of his own volition, Defy Media subjected the rest of the staff to multiple rounds of layoffs before finally shuttering their North Carolina office. Now what was left of the escapist was sold to Enthusiast Gaming. I don't know much about Enthusiast Gaming, but as long as they don't institute Russian Roulette Thursdays, they've got to be doing better than Defy Media. Next up, let's talk about the Warp Zone. They make gaming videos, sketches, music videos, acapellas, very talented guys, over 2 million subscribers on YouTube, 300,000 followers on Facebook, and Defy just left them hanging. They were selling other properties, they sold screen junkies off, but they couldn't bother to sell the Warp Zone. And now their channel's just in limbo, they haven't put up a video in over two months, and this is because Defy is either greedy or just doesn't care because they sold screen junkies. So you know you could sell properties. If you had sold the Warp Zone, another company could have paid them, given them a production budget, and let them keep producing videos. But instead you said either A, oh, we're not being offered enough money, or B, ah, we don't really care about those guys. Now their channel's owned by the bank. The bank obviously isn't giving them a budget to make videos, so they're just kind of screwed. Good work, Defy. And as we close out our list of creators Defy has screwed, number one, you probably saw this coming, it is of course Smosh. And if you've seen Anthony's video, you know that Ian and Anthony sold Smosh, one of the biggest channels on YouTube, I'm sorry, it was at the time the biggest channel on YouTube, for stock, which they were then told would be worth lots of money when the company went public. Defy Media goes under, it never goes public, their stock is worth nothing, they get totally screwed. The employees that they sent out an email saying you'll have 30 days uh, before everyone is laid off, do not get their 30 days and get fired the next day. And then of course you have the Smosh Games channels who were forced to put their channels in personal networks or hand over the ownership of their channels. And again, dumb, but they kind of had the upper hand in negotiating because, you know, they controlled our jobs. So what are you gonna do? And, but you've heard enough about what they did to Smosh. I wanted to run down some new ones for you, some new atrocities that they've committed. And I feel like I've accomplished that today. So that's where we're gonna end it today. But I don't feel like we're done talking about this Defy Media situation just yet. I, I want to get it. You know what? I'll save it for another video, but there will probably be more videos because I just have so much anger inside and it has to get out somehow. If you have a story about how Defy Media has screwed you over, go ahead and tweet me. I'm at LaserCorn. I'll put it on the screen. And uh, throw a hashtag DefySucks in there 
And that's how I'll, I'll filter by those and then I'll get your stories in. And maybe you'll be included in the next video. You know, as horrible as Defy has been, uh, there are lessons, lessons to be learned and I've learned some of them the hard way. Don't ever sell your channel. Do not ever create a channel with your name on it that then someone else owns if it's your brand. Do not get in an MCN unless the money is going directly to you. Uh, there's more tips on that in the MatPat video and how to, he talks about setting up trusts and stuff. In fact, I'll leave a link to that. And uh, that's it for today. Um, yeah, just be careful out there if you're, you're a creator. Don't trust corporations in general. They're not your friends. They're out to make money and they will screw you over the first chance they get. Not every corporation, I'm sure, but most of them. It seems that way. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll get back to some gameplay really soon. And uh, yeah, and probably some more Defy videos too. Because as I mentioned, not done. Still a lot of anger. Bye. Thank you to all my Flamethrower level Patreon supporters for helping me make this content. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, you can go ahead and click the link right over here. Or just subscribe to my channel by clicking right over here. Or if you just want to see another video, you can go ahead and click right over here. And don't forget to check me out at facebook.com slash lasercorn where I've been streaming a lot lately. Thanks. See ya.